A pillager outpost, a place where many Minecrafters have found their sticky end, but it is also a really good place for you to build a raid farm. I'm going to show you how. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, and welcome to another episode from me, Avamance, in my farm tutorial series. I'm going to do something just a little bit different to what I've done before, and we are going to convert this pillager outpost into a raid farm. Not just a pillager farm, but a raid farm, and I'm going to show you how to do it now. This farm uses a really simple mechanism. We've got two villagers in the middle and a bed. If we kill an ominous banner carrying pillager, it's going to trigger a raid. Any normal pillagers just flow themselves into the system like this and get swept into the middle. And as a result of sweeping into the middle, go into my lovely kill chamber and I can get their XP and their drops as well. We don't have any worry about the Ravager Beasts because these four kill chambers around the sides stop them from clogging up the system. For this farm, all you are going to need is 80 cobblestone walls, 36 oak signs, doesn't have to be oak, but any sign, about 16 lanterns, it's up to you, they're completely optional, about 16 ladders, about a stack of glass panes, one bed, two trap doors, two buckets of water that you can make an infinite water source out of, one hopper, four buckets of lava, about a stack of dark oak slabs, but you'll get a lot of those from deconstructing the pillager outpost, two chests, about a stack of fences, I'm using dark oak again because it's a pillager farm, about a stack of slabs, I'm using stone slabs, three blocks of glass, about half a stack of carpet, maybe a handful of torches, and if you want, some structural blocks to line the farm, but you absolutely don't have to do that. The first thing is probably the hardest thing, which is to get rid of the pillagers, or at least avoid them. We're going to be deconstructing this tower in a minute and building around it. And if there are pillagers around, they're probably going to try and shoot you in the face. I'm in creative for the sake of the video, and I'm going to put it into peaceful just to get the growling out of the way. But rest assured, you are going to be dealing with pillagers when you make this farm. Get yourself up to the top of the tower. You can do that using a ladder or maybe you've got a lighter or something like that. And take this tower down all the way to the ground. Literally cut every bit off of it, collect all of these resources. They could be very useful in actually making the farm itself. But cut this fella down so as there is nothing left but that wooden floor right at the bottom. Once you are down to the floor and you've got this platform here, come to the middle. If you want to put a marker in the middle of it, that's fine, you don't have to. And count out from this marker with the one next to the marker being one, 12 in the north, south, east and west direction. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12 there. And on the 13th one, pop a block. Do that in all four sides. And once you've got that, what you're going to need to do is fill in outside of this rim, so as it is on the same level as your current floor, another 10. So you've got basically as flat a surface as you possibly can, 10 at least outside of your markers. So I'm just going to fill that up now. Once you've got your platform there, it looks pretty big, but it doesn't take too long to make. Make sure you've got a fringe around it so mobs can climb up. Remove anything that could cause a mob to get stuck. So for example, make sure that mobs could climb out of that water source. You may even want to fill the water source in. And if you've got any little caves, especially if they climb underneath your platform, that's a possible place that pillagers could spawn and get stuck. So perhaps fill those in as well. Doesn't matter if you light it up, Pillagers and pillager raids don't care about the light level, so you've got to fill these things up or block them in some way to make sure they don't become an obstacle and reduce the effectiveness or even break your farm. Now we've got this space ready, we need to dig out the 25 by 25 square that lands between these yellow blocks. So the square that kind of goes this way, all the way along until you meet the edge here and then all the way along here, all the way around, 
too deep. So let's crack on with that. Now, as I dig this square, you'll notice that I'm leaving the square in the middle intact, specifically the nine by nine square, which is rather conveniently with one of these towers made up of that wood. We are going to be doing something else with that in just a moment. So leave that bit alone. Now, this is the part that if you're bothered about the way it looks, trim all this hole up with some stone or some other block so as it looks pretty. If you're not bothered about the dirt, then don't bother. I guess I'm one of those people that is bothered. Come to one of the four sides, doesn't matter which one, and come to the center point where you've got your marker. Come out one, and then a block, one, and then a block, and then come on top. You can get rid of your marker now. Put an oak fence there, an oak fence there, and an oak sign there, not fence. Pop a cobblestone wall there, a cobblestone wall there, and then bring them up four high, and join them up across the top. Then on the one down, come out two, and the next one, come out one. Then grab some more signs, pop there and there, then crouch again there and there, and crouch again there and there. That's gonna give you um, a blocker that you can use to basically get in the way. And then bring a fence around like that and then we come around the other side now you want to get yourself a glass pane and crouch click on top of this sign in the middle and pop a glass pane you can see the glass pane pops there and then pop a glass pane on top of that one there one like that and then again another row on top so you've got kind of a, a three by two glass pane type of system there you've got those signs there and you've got two rows of signs on the inside then where you've got your three hole here i want you to dig out one two three and i want you to come six not including this one here six in this direction so one two three four five and six and dig it out three and what i'm going to do is i am going to trim it off just like that. And then grab yourself two buckets of water. And what's probably a good idea is if you grab a three hole there, put your two buckets of water in there and you can just keep filling your water buckets up from there. It makes it dead easy. Put a bucket of water in there and a bucket of water in there. That will run all the way down, you can see, to the edge, but it won't go over because the signs block it. On the middle sign at the back, pop your lava bucket using crouch click and that will flow a lava blade across all of those signs, but it won't come out. Now this is your Ravager Beast kill zone. Now you need a Ravager Beast kill zone because it won't be able to get into the kill chamber down below. It will allow you to collect the saddle that they drop though, so don't panic about that. And then on this side, not on the end one, pop a, a post, miss one, post, miss one, post, miss one, post, miss one, post, and that should just have one gap there and then come around the other side, do exactly the same. Post, miss one post, miss one post, miss one post, miss one post. Now that is that side completely finished. Repeat it on all the other three sides. And you should end up with something that looks a little bit like that, and that's brilliant. You'll notice it doesn't matter if you've got a hill right up at the top here. As long as pillagers and ravagers can actually get into that water stream or get past these posts here, it does not matter what the terrain is outside if it goes upwards. It is a problem if it goes downwards within this large square, like we said before. Now, come to this middle square, and before we do anything else with it, we are going to create ourselves a little villager podium. First thing, on top of this block, if you've got one, if you haven't got one, pop a block there and put a second block up. Then surround that second block with top slabs, like this, and then come in one direction, you want it to be five wide. And in the other direction, you want it to be seven wide. So that's three, four, five, six, and seven. And then all the way around the outside, put a row of glass. This is specifically glass panes, not glass blocks. And then in this middle part here, where the middle is, pop a block and then another block, take out that first block. You want to put a bed in the middle, doesn't matter where in the middle, as long as you've got it, and then 
on top of this block put a slab and you want to come to the edge over where your glass is get rid of all those blocks and come around with a slab on top of the glass now the slab should not be touching the glass because you've gone up a block if that makes sense and then you've got one bed right in the middle there and you've got a ring all the way around with just a gap here you can see that gap is a block gap right like that and now what we're going to do is we're going to transport two villagers into this part of the farm now you can do that using rails you can do it using boats obviously once you've got the villager to here getting it in with the boat is going to be a challenge so you're going to use a rail and just drop them off inside here it's really not that difficult there's a video about uh, rail transportation on my channel i'll try and remember to put a link in the description below but there are a bazillion videos out there on teaching you how to transport villages and i don't want to make this any longer than it has to be so we're going to assume that you know how to transport villages on this front and i'm going to get two right in here We've got our two villagers in there, safe and sound. I've also put two lanterns either side of the bed. You probably only really need one, but I put two in there for symmetry. That will stop anybody trying to spawn because that is a top slab that you've got that bed sitting on there. It's a top slab, so you don't want anything spawning in there like a zombie that would eat the villagers' faces. That just wouldn't do at all. I've also put a roof over the top. Now, these are bottom slabs, so they're not spawnable. They are too high away from the top part of this bottom slab ring. So I've raised it up to make a complete block, then a post of two, and then a, a roof that goes all the way around with an overhang. The reason for that is lightning. We don't want witches inside our farm. We want witches to attack our farm as part of the raids. It is no good if these guys turn into witches as a result of a lightning strike. It will break the farm and you don't want to have to transport more villages in. It's now time to remove this bit in the middle and take it all down to the same level as you had before. And once you've done that, you want to take it down just this square inside this stone one more level. And once you've got it down one more level, you need to find the very center. I'll be back when I've done that. Once all that is sorted out, you can get rid of that block if you did have one and you need to dig down here. Now, you can decide how far down you want to dig. Now, if you want to dig down 22 spots and have these guys, you know, dead with a tickle of a feather, you can totally do that. But I don't think it's necessary in reality. I think you get a better raid result if you go less deep. So I'm going to dig this down only 10 blocks. Now, theoretically, you shouldn't be digging straight down. So dig these two out like this. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And just as well we didn't. Look at that. Oh my goodness. That was a bit of luck that I didn't dig straight down and we only went down ten. There we go. So I'm going to pop that block back in there and we're going to clear ourselves out a little bit of space. Now, given that we've got an underground cave, I'm going to need to make sure I block this cave out and perhaps put a little bit of light into it. So I'm going to get on with that now. And once I've finished, I will be back. Once you've got an OK sized room, you can see we've got our two wide hole just there. Come to this hole and put a bucket of water just in there. This is temporary, but this is going to allow you to get back down dead easy without breaking your neck. And then come to a side wall. It doesn't matter which side wall, but bearing in mind I've got caves behind me. I'm going to come out this way and go out one, two, and three. And then in this direction, you need to dig out 16. Remember to light these caves, otherwise they do become spawnable. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 and then here actually just put the torch there we're going to dig straight up now equally dangerous to digging straight down unless you've got a ladder in which case if gravel falls it falls on top of the ladder and you're absolutely safe same with water same with sand it is all good so and just dig straight up to the surface laddering up all the way and you should find you come out somewhere next to your thing this is where 16 brings you right here then knock out that top ladder, get yourself a trap door, doesn't matter which trap door, you can be completely choose it yourself, doesn't matter, and pop a trap door so it opens out onto the ladder like that and you can get up and down really, really easy. But for the time being, we're going to express our way down and we're going to come 
in this hole here. Now what we want to do is we want to fill in this hole, the one that doesn't end in the granite there. So you drop down, I didn't drop down into the water, but drop down into the water and you're completely safe. And then we want to be building up and filling in this part of the hole. So reach up as high as you can. And then with more ladders, back up to the top like that. I made a right meal of that, but we got there in the end. And then what you can do is you can jump down onto that block, go one, two, three, and four, and you're back on the case. Break the ladders as you go back down because you don't want the ladders there. Can I reach that ladder? Yes, I can. And then come back out. Block off that and then open it up again. Because what you want to do is you want to put a chest here and here, a double chest. So it opens up really nicely. Get rid of this block. Obviously, you won't have a cave underneath. And pop using shift click a hopper into that chest like that. And then put a carpet on top of the hopper. What the carpet will do is it will stop you losing XP on that carpet, which is a real pain when you do that. It's not what you want. And then get a piece of glass and glass over the front of that like that. And that's great. And then what will happen is they won't be able to catch you. However, a baby zombie would be able to catch you if it dropped into the trap. And it's quite possible that it would. So you might want to think about putting a trap door on top of that chest and flapping it up like that purely for safety. Then what you can do is if you haven't got a cave in front of you, is you can dig those two out, pop those in there, and you can come down and you can hack away at them as much as you would like right there. Close it up when you're done. And that is actually this end finished. Get some chests and pop them in here. So you've got a bit of excess storage. Maybe you want to put, I don't know, some other tools or, or maybe an anvil so as you can combine enchantments or something like that. But this is that bit done. Now what I do recommend you do in here is place carpet on any spawnable block. Now the main reason for that is, if I can get in there, can I get in there? There you can. Um, the main reason for that is you could actually get your raid spawn down here in this chamber and that's not obviously something that you want because um, they won't get captured by the farm. When you come down here you'll realise that you know, it, it's not healthy for you, let's just put it that way. So carpet it all up and that then ceases to be spawnable. Open this up come out into the open and close it again. This farm is very nearly finished. Come to the center here and in this square inside, put a bucket of water in each corner, just in the corner, you don't need any more. Use the bucket to get out and that runs all the way to the hole, but not into the hole, which is very important. Then come along here and pop a block on that corner and put a bucket of water on top of the block. That water will run to there. And if you then do that in every corner, you'll find that you get your corners covered out and things that drop into the corners will automatically be pushed in the right direction. And then come in here, not the block next to the corner, but the one next to that, place a bucket of water and then another bucket of water with a gap and then another bucket of water with a gap. Now you can do this with just one bucket of water. So you place your water there, this becomes a water source block and you can just pick from the water source block and continue to take your water all the way along. Just every other block and make sure when you get to the other side, again, do not put water on the block next to the block in the corner because that will not go well. And what you'll find there is you've got the sheets of water going all the way to the edge, but not over. And that, my friends, is the finished farm. I put a few lanterns on the middle post of each of those half sides just to give it a bit of light. It, it just means you can see it from a distance. It's absolutely not essential. If you don't want to do that, just don't do it. That's fine. We are now ready to see if this puppy is going to start to work. I'm stood on the roof of the farm here just to really I get a good vantage point of all the directions. And I'm going to go from peaceful mode into just normal mode, I think. So let's get ourselves over there into normal mode and the pillagers instantly start to wander over. You can see they come in and the second they fall in, they roll all the way into that central column and they fall down to the bottom. And when they do fall down to the bottom, any pillagers that are in range, and not all the pillagers will be in range, remember, will, well, they'll be called for. 
these guys will say, Oi, come over here and help us. We've got some villagers that we want to shoot in the face. And they will. It takes a little bit of time for these guys to wander in. So don't panic when you see them meandering around on the outskirts. Now, what you really want is one of those fellas to wander in with the banner, because that's what triggers your raid. So you can see a banner boy has just fallen in the hole. This is our chance. Now, I'm in survival, I've got my sword, and I'm going to come down and I'm going to start battering these guys. Step right to the back of this block. If you come up here, they can actually get you. They may even be able to get the odd shot up every now and again. But just give them a quick whack. You see, they're going to try and shoot you. And I've just got Monster Hunter because it's the first monster that I've killed in this world. Just keep hitting them. You can see the banner boys are at the back there and I've got voluntary exile and the second it came the raid started you can see the raid banner coming on there and I'm already starting to kill this raid these things falling down now they've instantly come down because the pillagers that were local were considered to be the raid so I'm just going to continue to kill these pillagers until such time as there's no pillagers left and then that will trigger the next raid cycle just need that fella. So we're waiting for the next raider to come. There's one. And the next one. And there we go. And the raid bar is going up again. And if you can hear the horns going in the background. And those pillagers will very soon start to fall down my chute. And come to the end of my sword with that one round we've already got nine levels of xp it's not a bad xp farm i've noticed i have got some xp trapped there so i'm just going to take this trap door out there we go and that's put us up to 13 levels of xp that was more what i expected we can start to hit these fellas you can see it's only if there is a zombie that we've got a problem with that trap door being there so at the moment it's not a worry because it's daylight upstairs that's all of that round of the raid done. The next raid is coming. Now, what happens when you have a raid that comes to you from a pillager outpost is any pillagers that spawn in uh, close to the raid actually become part of the raid as well. So it, raids last longer than they would normally in a village. And the raid is coming along again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and we'll see what happens for the next bit from the top. So I'm at the top again and I wanted to show you what happens when the pillager beast comes along because obviously the pillager beast won't fit through the hole. These kill chambers are specifically to get the pillager beast dead. It can't fit through the posts so it doesn't even try and it automatically comes and gets flame on there as a result of it trying to get through the lava blade. It's an absolute joy to behold. Goodbye pillager beast. Go on, diet. You know you want to. Those fellas are strong. And the saddle gets washed along and gets caught down at the bottom. And as you can see there, I have managed to get myself hero of the village. The little doodad up in the corner there showing that I am a total hero and a raid victory thing at the top. This farm's really great. And then if you go and find yourself a new leader with a new banner, you can then use that to kick off another raid. So at the end of that, I managed to get myself just over 31 levels of experience from absolutely zero. And in my chest, bear in mind, I have not got a looting sword or anything. This is just a standard run of the mill sword, absolutely nothing on it. I've managed to get myself eight emeralds, one totem of undying, two lots of sugar, 11 ominous banners, some spider eyes, a nearly dead iron axe, and a load of crossbows, which is not too bad. And I could just keep on hitting these poor fellas for as long as we want. And if I kicked off another Bannerman, that would have another raid as well. I don't want to do that at the moment. They look really cross with me. This is actually a very effective and a really simple farm. There are a number of raid farms out there that are a little bit tricky, in my opinion, to make. But this one, I mean, really is dead, dead simple. It's just a bit of digging frankly. There's no real resources in there. You don't have to line this thing up with stone. I just did that because it was making my teeth itch. It's a nice farm, great for experience, really good for all kinds of raid farm goodies. If you have enjoyed this video, please remember to slap that like button. It'd be great to know you're enjoying it and I will keep on making it. Also, if you've not done it already, please do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to see you in my sub club. I look forward to seeing you 
in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.